All right, here's our chapter two video review. Um, you need your graphing calculator, and I will try to go slow, but remember you can pause and rewind um, as you need to. So this problem is asking us to use the regression feature on our calculator, and we're going to be doing linear and exponential because that's all it needs us for us to do. And we're going to do the one that it's not first and the one that it is second. So the first thing I need to do is get my data entered into my calculator. This will be my x, this will be my y. On the calculator, this will be L1 and the other one will be L2. So, it doesn't matter which model you have, my buttons that I'll be pushing are the same. So, where I'm going to start is with the stat button, and I'm going to press stat. I'm going to stay here under edit, and if you have any lists like I do, you need to go up to L1 and press clear, and then enter, and then go over to L2 and press clear and enter. Don't delete, just um, clear and enter. So I'm going to enter my data 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 under L1. And then I'm going to scroll over to L2 and enter in my uh, cost per gallon. Okay. When you're done, make sure that you know all your data is correct because if this is not matching this, then um, you're going to get the wrong answers. So, and on the test, I won't be able to figure it out. And also make sure every L1 has an L2. All right, what we need to do is first get this so that we can see it. So go to second, y equals, and you're going to choose plot one. So hit enter. And you want to make sure it's on this time. So hit enter. And then you also want to scatter plot. Um, make sure that it is... Um, L1 and L2 here, and then choose how you want it to mark it. This is the only choice you get. Do you want this, this, this? And once you've got that, we're going to press zoom, and we're going to press, well, I better double check this one, zoom zero, or sorry, zoom nine for stat. So we have to decide, does this look more linear or exponential? There is a slight curve to it, so I'm going to call this exponential instead of linear. So since it's exponential, I want to do the linear one first. So I'm going to quit out of this second mode, and if you have anything, just clear out your screen, and I'm going to press stat again. I'm going to scroll over to calc. I'm going to choose option four for linear, and this is where if you have a different operating system, so let me show that to you. Uh, you it might look like this instead, okay? So if your calculator looks like this, just stay there. If you're the newer operating system, scroll down to, actually, you just scroll down to Calc, Calculate, and hit Enter. All right, I don't have the R. We don't need the R. Um, if this is your operating system, just hit Enter. And I'm going to get the same information, so I'm going to move this one. So, again, don't copy the screen. I want you to put this in for A, this in for B. These decimals are short, so I'm not going to round. On the test, I will tell you how to round if I need for you to round. So, my equation is Y equals... Okay, now I'm going to do exponential, and I'm going to do a little bit more with the exponential. So you can clear this out. We don't need it anymore. Again, I'm going to press stat, scroll over to calc, and this time I'm choosing option zero. I'm scrolling up to get here. Exponential. And this time, when I do this, um, again, let me get to the other calculator. Uh, if you have the newer operating system, scroll down to store. If you have the older operating system, Stay here, don't hit enter yet. If you've hit enter, then repeat this process. Stat, scroll over to calc, choose option zero. Um, but now, whether you have this operating system or this operating system, press the VARS button. Scroll over to Y VARS, choose one for function, one for Y1. And then at this point, on the older operating system, remember you can, um, like this, you can just hit enter. I know it's blurry. On the newer operating system, just scroll down to calculate and hit enter. And we'll get the same answer, new or old. All right, now these are long decimals. So let's round to the nearest hundredths, okay, two places. So again, don't copy the screen. In for A, I'm going to put 0.94. And then in parentheses, just so it doesn't blend in, I'm going to put 1.20 to the X power. Now, the reason why we did the VARs now is now when you press the Y equals button, that equation unrounded is in there. I don't want you to put your rounded equation in there. I want this unrounded version. Okay? Um, now let's graph it. So 
when we hit graph, it's going to hit the plot the points and the equation. And now we're going to draw a picture. So I don't see an x and y axis, so I'm not going to draw an x and y axis in here. I'm just going to put the points, and there's, I can get all these points, one, two, three, four, five, put five points in there. Okay, so I'm going to move this, and here's my picture, so I got about a point here, 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 and here. And then I'm just going to draw how this matches, so. Okay, and there are arrows here, this is exponential. Um, now I want to go and copy the window down. So for that I just press window. And, you know, for x min and x max, those are short, 1.6 to 6.4, I'll write those in there. And you should have the same dimensions. Now, the y min, I don't want to copy all of those, so I'll just put 1.1 and 3.2, I'm going to round. Okay? All right, we are ready to answer these questions. So first, why do you think that you weren't asked to find a quadratic? Um, the reason why I'm not asked to find a quadratic is because I only have one half of the U. It would really force the calculator to make up these other points that are over here, and we don't want it to do that. So the shape is obviously not quadratic. It's close to linear, but it's definitely not quadratic. Okay. All right, now I want to answer these other questions. So what I need to do now that I'm ready to answer questions, and I will tell you this little part on the test to turn your plot off. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is just press the Y equals button, scroll up to plot one and hit enter so it's not highlighted, and now go back to the graph. So uh, this graph's slow because it's in color. Okay, so there's two options to do this. You're either going to use the trace button and scroll up and down, or you're going to use the table set second window. So we're going to use the trace button when we're asked to find y. So if you've got your calculator, maybe make, whoops, sorry, I just hit this and now it's all over. We're going to press, if you're going to use the trace button if you're given y. Oops, you can't even see that. And you're going to use the table set if you're given X. Okay, so you just have to figure out what am I given, Y or X. Um, going up here, um, X, X is years, okay, and it's the years since 2000, so 2002, 2003, 2004, and Y is the cost per gallon. So on D, when According to the model you chose, how much would gas cost in 2015? I'll use the table set. But remember, we don't have 2015 up here. How many years is that since 2000? So that means I'll be focusing on when X is 15. So I'm going to press second window, which, and I want to just say, hey, start at 15. And then go to your table, and it will tell you the answer. So according to this, and this is money, so $14.60. Um, is this an accurate prediction? Well, it's 2016, and gas is somewhere around $2.13. Uh, so no, it's not. All right, E, when does your model predict that the gas cost of a gallon of gas will hit $4? So that's Y. So when I, I give you Y, use the trace button. So you'll have to go back to your graph, press the trace button, and we're going to get close to 4, but we might not get exactly 4. So I'm just watching the Y values. And it's going to go off the graph. Now, the newer operating system, my graph is adjusting. I don't know if it does that on the other operating system. I am just focusing till I get to four. So I'm getting close. Oh, so here we go. So here I'm at three dollars. I don't know if you can see this. And 99 cents. And that's in about uh, almost eight years. Let's see if we can get this to focus. There we go. Um, 
And if I just go over one more, now I'm a little over four and it's 7.9 meters. So 7.9 if I round it, 7.9 if I round it. So in 7.9 years, so 7.9 years, now you can't see it. Or you maybe you want to say the time. So um, almost 2007, so it's actually the end of 2007 or almost... 2008. And gas was pretty high, but I don't know if it was uh, $4 then. And what do the y-intercept and the growth factor tell you about the cost of gasoline? So here's the equation. I'm just going to rewrite it. So in Algebra 1, you learned that this was how we wrote it. And B is the y-intercept. So B is $0.94. Cents. So 94 cents means that when, um, when our data started, so this was the starting price for gas in 2000, okay? And I say 2000 because this is the year since 2000. So if they actually had another table and they had zero here, I'd have um, 0.94 in there. Okay, um, the growth factor, let's see, so that's the G. Um, this is what it's growing by every year. Now, this is a decimal version of a percent, so it's growing by 120% every year. Okay, all right, um, not 120%, I'm sorry, 20%. We just want to focus on this part. It's growing by 20% every year. Or you could just say they're multiplying by 1.2 each year to get the new price. All right. Let's look over to the back. So I'll do problem two, and then we'll start a new video. So find the solutions. Um, this one, Y1, Y2, but this one, put one of them in Y1, put the other one in Y2. So go to your Y equals button. If your plot is not off, turn it off. Clear out your equations, and I'm going to put 2 to the x power minus 6. And again, this operating system will make look different for other calculators. Negative 1 third, I'm just going to wrap that in parentheses to show it's a fraction. And then x squared, and again, this is your x button right here. And then I'm going to press zoom 6 the first time I always graph a new shape, and hopefully I can see it. And it is not asking me to draw the picture. I don't remember on the test if you need to draw the picture. You might have to. So I just need to see where this meets. And it's going very slow. So it looks like it's going to meet twice. So to figure out the point of intersection, you hit second trace and you choose option five. And the only work you have to do here is get your cursor over to where they meet. And once you get over there, you just have to hit enter three times. And I'm going to round to the nearest uh, tenths on this one. So negative 4.2 and negative 5.9. So there's one solution. Okay. And then I'm going to do this again, second trace. And this time I'm going to choose 5 again. And I'm just going to move my cursor to the other one. And that's close. Hit enter three times. And this one, 2.2 and negative 1.5. All right, let's go to the next one. Hopefully I don't have to go to the next video. So y equals, clear these out. And I'm going to put x to the fourth. Minus x cubed. Minus 12. And then 4x minus 15. Now, I'm going to have to go to the next video, so I'm just going to talk real quick about this. Uh, common mistakes if you're getting error messages, are you putting negative signs instead of subtracting signs? If you have the newer operating system, how am I getting out of exponent mode? Once I hit, for instance, x and then the caret key for the power and fourth, to get out of exponent mode, I just use the right arrow. So um, I'm going to pick up in the next video.